Okay, hi, this is Jadi. The other day I was reading Cuckoo's Egg, a classic novel based on reality about hackers. How one astronomer dated 1986 or something, saw a very small minor abnormality in their accounting system, less than a dollar. He followed it up and ended up catching a Russian spy. I won't spoil the whole thing for you, and he did not catch a Russian spy, but Russians were involved. Highly recommended to be read if you are interested in hacking stories in old school retro Unix computing and how everything started on the Unix world, on the Linux world, also on hacking world and even the internet itself. Very, very nice read. Sometimes it's boring, very, very long, but still a nice read if you are interested. In the beginning of the book, he suspects that a hacker is connecting to their system. What he does is, this is not what he does, what he thinks, it, he thinks that, okay, one idea is changing our shell, the environment, the dark environment, you write your commands and see the outputs. He thinks that, okay, I can change the source code, so whatever the hacker writes there is saved into the file. And later I can examine this file and see what hacker had done. Later he uh, abandons this idea, goes another direction, which is more geeky, connecting terminals to every phone line and everything. Read it, it's nice. But... I thought this is a good opportunity to do the same thing on Bash. Why? First, because it's cool. Second, to encourage you to read the book. But the most important part, in many cases, we tell uh, incomers, newcomers, or even experienced programmers to contribute in real-world, open-source, huge projects. The main obstacle in entering this kind of activities is it's difficult to study the code. The code base is huge and it's difficult to read it. Sometimes you start from the main, you start reading, you know the C, you know the bash, but you cannot understand the code. I've thought this is a good opportunity to work. Although, also, I have got a present, a Raspberry Pi 400, which is a very cool device. It's made in the style of retro computers, just one keyboard, the computer is inside it with a few ports connected to the TV, nowadays to a monitor, to HDMI monitor, plug the cable and insert the SD card and boom, you have a computer. So I'm trying to show this on that machine because I'm using it as an everyday machine nowadays for fun. So I have installed Manjaro on it using the i3 tiling window manager because it's less a uh, resource savvy, if the word is correct. Anyway, with uh, meta and enter, I can open a terminal. When we say tiling, it means, okay, if I open more terminals, it will just try to show all of them because you won't have a window in which, which you don't want to see and you never want to see the wallpaper. Both of these are wrong. This is the idea behind the tiling window manager. So it just... Uh, resizes, replaces windows to give you the best view. Although you can change your view. For example, I can change this to this style. Now I have these two. Anyway, I'm not talking about the tiling window managers. Uh, so let's start. First, we have to get the bash source. I will run the Firefox. Here I have it. I have already searched, bash, github will give you the bash source. Although it says the unofficial, where is it? Hello, computer. Ha, ah, very slow. Although it says uh, free software, I just searched for bash. Did I? an official mirror of bash repository. Why is this? Because bash is being maintained in other place, but this is a mirror of it. So I will download from here, from the GitHub. First, I will get the code. 
I will copy the link. Now I will go to the temp mkdir work cd work and w get the bash source. I will download the bash source to work on it. Our idea should be first downloading the bash source, second to compile the bash source as it is. So we are sure that we can compile and we can use it. When this is done, we can start changing the code, doing modifications, compiling, compiling it again and using it. In most of the huge projects, you have two different files, which is install. Another one is readme. Under readme, you get some general information about the project. You can see the download speed is not good. One strange reason is I had even issues connecting to my wireless check the forum someone said okay change your resolution it will help it was mad idea i did and it worked later i found out it seems there is a conflict between frequencies between hdmi is not shielded good and it has it make issues on the wi-fi connectivity which is very strange if you reduce your resolution it makes it better anyway on the readme file there are some info about the projects how to report bugs sometimes how to contribute and everything on the install file you have the method of installing or compiling this you see on the in the linux world when you want to compile something you don't need to compile something most of the time if you just if you just want to install something you will use your distros package manager. For example, on the Arch, you will say pacman dash capital S bash. This will install bash. You will tell apt install bash. You will say DNF install bash. Different distros have their own repositories and you don't need to compile things. But now we want to manipulate the source. So we have downloaded the source. It says, okay, your source is here, it's downloaded. I will unzip the master cd bash. This is the source. It says, okay, cd to the contain the source code and type configure. This used to be the de facto way to compile programs. I will do the configure. What configure does, it checks if your system can run, can compile this program correct correctly. If you have everything which is needed. It's testing for different things. For example, it is whatever any line you try. It's checking for sys params, you have it. Checking for this, you have it. It's checking for this, you have it. Yes, 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 yes. If you see a no, sometimes it's not a problem. For example, whether Winty is too small. No, it is not too small. It's not too small, be sure. <laughs> May not be too big, but not too be small. Anyway. <laughs> Sometimes you don't have something, but you have something else which does the job. But Configure can understand if you are missing some essential thing, it will give you an error here. For example, it says checking for get peer name. No error. I need get peer name. And you have to install get peer name dash dev or based on your system, whatever. Install the development files or header files. Okay. If this happens, the configure will break with a complaint and with an error. You have to do a pacman s something, install what is missing, and run configure again. But in bash, we have very, very, very few dependencies. Why? Because it's a very basic utility. It's the environment when you write your commands, when you run your commands, when you give commands, see the output and everything. This black hackerish environment. This is the shell. Bash is one of the shells. So. It needs a very, very, very small amount of dependencies. Even some parts of the dependencies, it's included in itself. Battery is included. If it needs a library, library is part of the bash files. So it would be very easy to compile it as soon as you have the uh, system working, when, as soon as you have the OS. See, now no error, configure is done. So when the configure is done, you have to do the make. I will say make. And what it does is 
it's actually running the GCC, the compiler of the C. It's compiling the software libraries first, whatever is needed at the end will create the bash executable, compiling, linking, and everything, whatever is needed. Okay, so when this is done, we will have an executable bash based on the source code we downloaded. After that, we can go and read the code or change it, or even we can do it now. We don't need to wait for that. I think we don't need our browser anymore. If we need it, we will open it. What we need is our code editor. For code editor, I'm here using VS Code. When I want to work on a big project with lots of files, VS Code is my choice. You can do whatever you prefer. But I ran it as soon as you install it. It is a good idea to go to the extensions part and install some of the needed extensions. Here is a recommended one. It's new, so it is just starting. I have the C and C++. If you are working with Python, it is good to also install Python. Whatever source code you work. Even if you don't do this, as soon as you open a Python file, it will ask you to install the recommended extensions. Now I have C++, so C++ should work fine. Take note. This is not the compiler. These are the extensions which help you work with C++ files, like highlighting, finding the reference of a variable, where this is used, and this kind of stuff. Open a folder. I will open the file, and we can browse what we have. OK, that was in slash tmp, slash work, slash bash master. This is the, our source code. One way is starting to understand truly whatever we have. That is finding the main function, starting from main function, reading everything, which will give you a very, very good understanding of what the software works, but it's very, very difficult. I wanted to see if I have zoomed something. Reset zoom. Starting from main, okay, if you do, it will help you understand every single thing the program does. But it's very difficult. Sometimes even finding the main main is difficult because there are different libraries. Each one has its own main and this kind of stuff. And second, it's like when you have your headphones like this which is always happen i don't know with what with what kind of magic and trying to find this and going like this starting from main but a better idea is starting from somewhere seeing okay what i have here and open it up if you have this you don't need to start from this you can go from wherever you see is nice and open it this is what we are going to do so if i want to my idea is, first, I will compile the source as it is. I'm doing it here. Second, I will start changing it to save whatever keyboard you have pressed. If I wanted to do this on the bash, which I don't know about, I had a look once, so now I know what I'm doing. But I would check all the files, all the header files, to make myself familiar with the whole project. I could start with searching for the main and find the main main and start from there. But that is not my preferred way. My preferred way is having a look, eagle view to the whole project. See how many mains we have. This is in... Uh, array has its own main. This is a different library. Config has its own main. Configure calls main. Everything. This is difficult. So what I will do is I will have a look to the files see what kind of files i have this is an eagle view you are not looking for exactly specific thing you are looking for you are having a whole view holistic view and understanding the different parts of the project you are not reading anything in depth to do this it's good to check only even the header files if you just check the header files it will show you what functions you have what Variables are defined. What I mean, what uh, uh, this is done. 
So now I have this bash executable here. This was as very slow because it was compiling everything. If I do it again, that would be super fast because everything is pre-compiled. If I change something, it will compile only that file. So if I run the bash I just made, I'm in my new bash. It works normal and everything is there. So I will exit now in my, I am on my own system. So let's study the files. First, we have some directories, some buildings, some cross build, some docs, example, some includes, which is nice, but there are only headers. So nothing, uh, not the exact software is here. It's exact code, just the headers to be used on other places. So this is not important. On the libs, we have glob, for example, glob h, wildcard pattern matching for gnu. Only provides this glob pattern, glob vector, glob something. This was glob, int, I'm not, I don't know what is this, so let's try to find the file. For example, get text header, I can change the size because I need more space on my programming side. Uh, what do we have here? I will check the functions to have an understanding of what this does. Configure JSON, don't show again. The marketplace M4 files. I don't know it at the moment. NL load domain and the load something. Local character set should be for localization or internationalization. I have M alloc included. This is for allocating. I am alloc internal. M alloc is alloc's memory. These are libraries Bash is using. Read line, the name is very interesting. I want to read the lines which are typed by the hacker. So character set, this is the way you get yourself familiar with the code base. Now we are having more idea of how Bash is organized. And these are only the libraries they use, not the actual things. And see stdlib and, and, and remember, the programmers have done their best to help you study their code, contribute to their code, to make it maintainable. So there will be lots of uh, comments, uh, very good names on the functions, on the libraries. It's very easy. Read line, std, something, character defs, character definitions for read line. Very interesting. For example, Define white space as space and tab character. See how cool it is. And many different things. Meta character threshold is this. Colors, if you wanted to show colors, most probably they have defined here. History leap. What it does. First line says internal definitions for the history library. I will go and see what functions it has. It doesn't have much functions, but the history should have more functions. What it does, the names of functions that you can call in history. Interesting. What can we call using history? History, git history, state. History, set history, add history, add history time, remove history. Most probably this is the control R we are doing and checking the history, maybe, just a guess. I, what I want to show you is when you don't know a project, you only get the source code, how you start reading it. I'm checking just the C header files and see what functions they define. Key maps. Interesting. No header files anymore. Parse color. POSIX DOIR. POSIX JMP. POSIX STAT. Read line itself. The names of functions callable for read line. What functions we have in read line? Read line digit argument, read line universal argument, forward byte, forward character, backward character. See, now I'm under read line. I have the C extension, so when I click on a function, it says, okay, this is defined like this. 
Let's find something more interesting. Read line insert, quoted insert, tab insert, lots of things. VI editing mode, Emacs editing mode. I'm looking for something which reads only one character. Kill word, kills one word. Kill full line, copy forward word, yank. It's changing the read lines. And there are lots of functions you can see here. We should be a little bit quicker, but these are grouped in the, for example, read line history something, read line callback something, read line VI. We are sure we are not looking for VI. We are just looking for read key or something. Read line itself. Set prompt, expand prompt, discard argument, add defined utility functions to bind keys to read line commands. We don't need these. Read line set key, macro bind, functions, undocumented in text info manual, not really useful to program. Translate key sequence, copy key maps, everything is about key maps, add undo, begin undo. Read line, redisplay, keep mark, message, show character. I'm just having a look to the groups. Modifying text, we don't need it. Terminal and TTY mode management, we don't need it. Functions for character input. Stuff char, clear, read line, read key. This looks very interesting. Get C. These are the things we want. For example, here you can do a right click, you can go to the definition. This is the definition which is defined here. And this is the function itself. It says, okay, this the definition comes from here. You can go there, right click and say, go to references. And it will show you where this is referenced. It's reading all the files and say, okay, this is used in different places. Here in bash line C, this is used. In this file, this is used. Even on kill C, this is used and every other thing. But don't forget your mission. We are looking to the all files, but it seems we found what we needed. Input and uh, RL read key. Read key, remember that. Anyway, this was the read line. SH, term cap, everything. PO is for translations in different languages. What are them? And this is the main project, alias, for example. It says structure definitions, array. Definition for the interface exported by array C. Rest of the shell manipulates them. For example, you say array flush, array copy, array slice. Most probably they are using arrays in different places. Array functions. What I want to show you is how you get yourself familiar with a huge project. We didn't know anything about Bash. We had a mission that we want to find where the character is read and save it to a file. But we are getting familiar with the whole Bash thing. Associations, definitions for the interface exported by ASOC-C. Bash and C. Bash history, this is most probably the bash history itself. For example, history lines in these sessions, history lines in file. Don't save functions. Bash initialize history. Load history. If you want to see what is this, you can go to the definition and see what it does. It's if is not set, if not hist file to this, hist file defined. You know the hist file. You can do this on the bash. And it shows you, okay, my history is saved here. So when you want to load the history, it does this. It tries to open the file and calls the read history. You can go to the definition here and check what is this read history. This way you can get yourself familiar and familiar. This is easier than finding the main and see what the main does. That's another way, but based on what you want to do, there are different methods. For me, it's easier to jump in the middle of somewhere, do something and start understanding more and more what is happening around me. Anyway, history lib, history edge, key maps, defines the key maps. The key map contains, well, in the middle, manipulation of read line key maps. Sometimes you key map something to something. This is what it does. 
and lots of other stuff. Where are we? Why are we in the lead read line? We should be here. We should checking the. We were checking the bash history, bash jump, bash line interface to the bash read line functions. Pause this read line initialize reset something bash line reset bash re edit get host name list interesting clear host name list and everything. See, we are getting more and more familiar. Now we have an understanding of how bash works. Command H, this is also interesting. The structure used internally to represent commands. Wow. Oh. What functions do we have? I'm going just in the header files and checking for the functions mainly. It has copy functions, dev contents, nothing very interesting. Config, config bot, config top, conf type, dispose command, error edge, externs, execute command. This is also nice. Functions from execute command. What do we have here? Dispose, close fd, undo partial, redirect, shell exec execute command internal externals flags general hash hash lib input edge maybe this is calling what we are looking for we will come back to this input edge jobs manage jobs like forking and everything should be here let's see Make children, stop making children, <laughs> clean up the pipeline, and mail check, make command, found in make command. See, now we are kind of familiar. If you speak even about internals of bash, we have some idea how it works. Alloc making bear, if you want to find where the completion comes, everything, now we have find them. I'm enjoying this. And now you have a better idea. I'm just reviewing this file. Signal, signal list, signal names, substy, syntax. Maybe checking the whole syntax thing. Test, unwind, version. Ah, what is the version? For you, if you want uh, homework, you can try to change the version name. If I do the bash dash dash version, it will tell me what version I'm on. You can change this, include your name, change the version, say this is the, oh, sorry. When saying bash version, it's not running. Okay, anyway, let's go back to our input, see how the input was working. Where was it? It's here. This is the main bash file. I'm checking if we are reading here. For example, initialize bash input, restore, get with restart, save, close, buffer, get character with restart, find reserved word. This is not what we're looking for. So I will go back to the read line here. What I had was this read key, and I will see the references for read key. It's finding references is all the files. And will show me that, okay, these are called in these places. These are all in the leap. Leap, 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 leap. Okay, I will go to this. Read key definition. This is it. See what is does. Read a key. Very nice. Include pending input. Very nice. If I stop here with my mouse, it will show me where this variable is defined and what's the comment there. It says, if set to a character value, 
that will be the next keystroke read. Okay, so if I have something waiting, we'll read that one. Else, it does this. The fun part is that these are not aligned correctly, which is very strange for a project like this. It says, if C's macro key returns the next character available, otherwise it does this. Also, we have this hook. At the end, it does reads one character. This is where it reads, reads one character. Get a key from the buffer or characters to be read. Return the key in key. Okay. Key was the first parameter. So C is the key which is read. And this returns C. This C is what we need to save in a file. Let's do it. My C is a little bit rusty, but we can do it. I say we have a file which is called file handler. Uh, file open. Because I have the extension, it helps me and shows me how it works. Constant character file name. Temp spy txt is what we used in the other version of this. This is the second time I'm recording this. And A plus is the archive method to open it. So now I, ha ah, I have to say my handler is this one. Then I have to F printf where to write and fh what to write one character and uh, write the c then f close the file hat this is a very bad programming because each time a key is pressed i'm opening a file save something in it and close the file this is very ugly and bad performance but anyway who cares I can do a make here. Ah, cd temp. I have closed and opened this again. No, cd bash. I can do a make here. It will only compile the changed part. So this is fast. Now I have the bash. New bash. If I run this bash, I can replace the main bash with this one. If I copy this on my own executable. Here, if I say echo jaddy ls and exit now i'm in my main computer not in the fake bash i have to have the file spy txt but it's no showing not some nothing the first time i recorded this this was a surprise and i trub i had a trouble a few seconds to find out why but later what i did was i did an ls ltrh and you see that the file size is something so there is something in this file we can check with od which is octal dump I will octal dump this file and you can see it has some content. What I can do with dash C will show the human readable characters. So what we have, we have echo jody slash R. When you hit enter in the computer world, it sends two different characters. One is slash R, which goes to the first of the same line. Also, we have the backslash n, I said the slash, backslash, backslash n, which goes to the next line. So what is happening here? I have saved this. Bash is reading that enter as backslash r. So I have done echo jody backslash r. So it writes echo jody goes to the first of the same line. Then I have ls backslash r. So it writes ls goes to the same line. Then I have exit backslash r. So it says exit goes to the same line and the bash will write its prompt. So I'm not, I'm seeing nothing. I have to replace this with backslash n. A cool C method will be this. Is C equal with backslash R? If yes, return back backslash L. If not, return back C itself i save that i can do a make again we'll compile the program again now i have a new bash i can run my bash now i have echo jody date ah, date ls and exit now if i cat uh temp spy txt now i have echo jody i have tried to write date 
unsuccessful then i said date then i did ls then i exited if again you do with the octal dump you will see what happened i said echo jody oh this is for the first time i did this and the second time i was here echo jody i replaced backslash r with backslash n so now we are seeing it then i say d t e 177 this is the code for backspace i hit backspace once hit backspace once more then typed ATA, then backspace, backspace, then E, then backspace, then ATE, enter, and it was a failure. So I did another date. So see, even I have the backspaces, whatever you hit will be saved here with a human readable code or with a, as an code here, then LS, then this. If I run my lovely tmax you can split pages and everything so you can have tail dash f temp spy txt and if you run your fake bash here you can say hider date ls remember this is only recording whatever is typed into the bash if you run a, another program and type something there for example if you say read when you are typing something here, you are typing in the read, not in the bash, so you don't have that data. Anyway, I wanted to show you how you can read source code, how you can start understanding the code base. For me, it was like jumping from somewhere, not from the main, going directly to see what is happening. That's more difficult. Get part of the program, understand what it does, and then expand your understanding. Also, check the header file, check what functions you have, what directories, the structure programmer had worked, also, if you have the source code, it is good to go through the source code. I will try to show one, another video, maybe something, sorry, based on the git and the commits and this kind of stuff. And also it was cool to make this. Never misuse your knowledge. Have fun. This was Jody from Geeking. I will be glad if you subscribe. It will give me more courage to record with my bad English. Anyway, enjoy. This was Jody. Bye.